guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a drugstore get ready with me featuring the new Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer Collection by Casey Holmes. So we're gonna be using this palette and we're also going to be using a lot of other drugstore products throughout the video. Technically, the only product that I am using that is not a drugstore product is going to be one of my brushes. I'm using the IT Cosmetics Love is the Foundation brush, but everything else is going to be drugstore brands and it's going to be kind of a get ready with me talk through how to get this look. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also hit the little bell icon down at the bottom there to be notified of all my future uploads. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a full face of drugstore makeup. Um, we're gonna do it as glam as we possibly can and get a really fun um, daytime look, transitioning it to an evening look. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna take my Photo Focus Face Primer um, by Wet n Wild. I'm just gonna put probably a pea-sized amount on my two fingers, just like that. Um, and kind of work it together and I'm gonna work it over my whole face. I love this primer. It is literally, I believe around $5 um, at the drugstore and it just does such a good job of mattifying the skin but it also hydrating the skin as well. I feel like my skin type is kind of very combo skin. I get really oily in the summer and then really dry in the winter. So this one, it actually works really, really well for me during both seasons because it is a very hydrating primer. It has a little bit of silicone in it. It kind of, it feels very softening to the skin, but it's nowhere near as tacky as some of the other primers that you can get from the drugstore can be. If you are more on the dry side, you probably don't wanna try something like this, or if you do, you wanna try it with a setting mist on top, uh, like a dewy hydrating setting mist or the Neutrogena brand comes out with one that's kind of like a hydrogel, which I think is really awesome. Next up, I'm going to use one of my favorite foundations from the drugstore. This drugstore foundation is actually around the six or seven dollar mark. It's one of the cheapest ones that you can find. Rimmel Lasting Finish 24 Hour Breathable Foundation. Would I recommend wearing this for 24 hours? Probably not, but it does a great job of covering the skin, evening the skin out, and also it lasts a really, really, really long time on my skin. I love this foundation. It's the foundation I use pretty much every day as just an everyday foundation because it's cheap. It looks great in photos. It looks good on the skin. It sets well, and it doesn't really crease into my smile lines or anywhere else on my face, and I find that even though I get oily in my T-zone, the oil doesn't peek through, which is nice. And I usually take about one full doe foot, um, but there's, you know, quite a bit of product and on the sides, on the little, I don't know what you would call that, the straw part. <laughs> um, but I find that if I just use one full dollop, it covers my whole face the way that I want it to. But since we are going glam, I might go in and get a little bit more just to touch up on a few places. And I find the best way to kind of do this foundation is actually to just kind of spread it all over the face, almost like how you would wear it, except for not blending it out yet. Um, and I find that that tends to give you a more even coverage and it's it takes way less time in the morning because your face is fully covered already. So then I just kind of stipple my brush and pat my foundation into my skin instead of kind of dragging it around. I really like this method. I find that it gives me a more flawless finish to the face. I find that it doesn't create a streakiness the way that some people would just go in and do circular motions, and you can do that, but I find that the best way for me to get a full face, full coverage look is by bouncing my brush onto my skin. So I don't know if you can tell on my skin, but I feel like it just gives you such a evenness to the skin. It creates kind of um, a filter to the skin. It just has such a beautiful quality on 
camera so if you are taking lots of pictures I think this is an awesome foundation for that but let's go ahead and jump back in I'm gonna now apply concealer and one of my favorite drugstore concealers is actually the Master Conceal, and I believe it is from Maybelline, but it doesn't actually say on here, believe it or not. Okay, Maybelline, yeah. Um, so this is what it looks like. It just says Master Conceal on it. It comes in a little squeezy tube. I usually take just the smallest amount on my finger and work myself up because this stuff has awesome coverage but it it definitely can get cakey if you get too much um, so I'm just gonna kind of apply that and some discoloration obviously I'm gonna conceal underneath my eyes um, I'm also gonna apply a little bit to my chin and I just kind of take my finger and blot it on um, I know a lot of people think that's weird, um, so I'm going to show you another technique that you can use with the blending process. I'm going to put it around my nose and just on the tip of my nose. One tip that I have learned over the years that I find works the best for me personally, I get a really, really red nose, and I know that sounds really weird, but the tip of my nose, that's the first thing to go. Anytime I have any type of um, makeup on, that's the first place it leaves. And so what I have found to actually help with that is after you do your foundation, you'll start blending in with your finger on your nose. And that's probably why I just do the rest of my face with my finger most of the time. But I find that if you do that, it actually takes less product off of your, you know, the brush usually absorbs a lot more of your product. And so you're not gonna get as full of coverage with that. And so I like to just barely tap it in, but kind of squeegee it in, if you will, just like that. And I find by doing that and then setting it with a powder on top, it lasts 10 times longer than if I would apply it with a brush. This is one of my favorite brushes. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but it was a splurge for me and I will say it does magical, magical powers. It is one of the best foundation brushes I have ever used in my life. I think um, you can get one by Real Techniques that's the same density as this. This is the IT Cosmetics um, Love is the Foundation Brush. It costs like $30 and they sell them at Ulta since that is an exclusive brand to Ulta. It's an amazing brush. It's in the shape of a heart. I don't know if that really does anything with applying the foundation so much but I do love this foundation brush you can use real techniques has a foundation brush that's the same kind of density as this brush and I think it does just as well this one just happens to be the one that I picked up and it is an awesome brush so if you are looking to splurge this is an awesome one but there is like I said a cheaper drugstore alternative which is going to be probably the Real Techniques foundation brush which usually runs about $8.99. So the brush I picked up for blending in that concealer, it is actually an Eco Tools brush and it's just called the Buff Brush and it's at a slight angle which I like for getting kind of around the nose, around the eyes. I find that it works really well if I'm kind of, and once again, I'm doing that stippling padding motion. You'll get way more coverage that way and you won't get as much streakiness with that. But I find it does an awesome job of just kind of covering the skin and really not absorbing too much product because of its density. I don't know if you can kind of see this, but it's a very, very dense brush. It's very hard. It's not very mobile which I find is good for applying concealer because obviously you want the best coverage with your concealer, concealer that you can get. So my next step is to take, um, and I feel so bad, this one is so bit beat up, but this is the Fit Me, this is actually the pressed powder. Now they do have more of a loose powder formula of this exact thing that probably would be better for a setting powder, but somehow I have misplaced mine and I can't find it. But this is an awesome, 
awesome setting powder for me personally. I just take, once again, this is actually another Eco Tools brush, and this is the brush that I use for any powder that I have. It is literally like the smallest, daintiest little thing. I believe it's the Eco Tools Travel Powder Brush. It's super fluffy. It picks up powder nicely. I'm just gonna swirl and you can kind of see how much I get. And then I just, once again, using that tapping motion, I start with the middle of my face. And the reason being is because I find that if I start out here covering my cheeks with it, like that's fine and dandy and everything, but I'm oily as can be in my T-zone. And so if I set it, this is the main part of the face. The T-zone is basically your forehead and the middle of your face. So when I'm referring to the T-zone, that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> but basically, I find that if I sit here and I stipple around that portion of my face, that's what we want to set and lock in the place. That's what we want to have coverage. I don't really mind if I end up losing a little foundation in my cheek area or up on my forehead so much during the day because everyone's looking at the middle of your face. And so to me, it only makes sense to really set that first and then go in and set the rest of the face. So at this point, I think we have pretty good coverage. I don't know if you can kind of see, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm fully equally covered all the way around. Um, I don't really have any creasing or anything like that. I do have a pimple over here, <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we covered it up. But let's go ahead and get into what my next step is. And most people think I'm weird for doing this, but it's what I like to do. So next, I like to do my brows just because my brows, if I don't have my brows on, I feel like I am just like a weirdo and I look very strange and alien-like. So I'm going to be using the e.l.f. brow pencil. They come just like this. I don't know if you can see that. But they come in a few different shades. I find that the taupe version is actually my perfect shade as a blonde. And the way I like to apply this, I feel like it doesn't have the actual, so it has a spoolie at the bottom and then it also has this at the top. And it's not a real waxy formula. It's good because it fills in my brow hairs without like pulling any, like you know what I mean? Sometimes you can get drugstore um, brow products that have a little too much wax and not enough pigment in there. And those I find end up pulling my natural brow hairs out, which is not what you want. <laughs> and so this is one that I found from the drugstore. It is $2, $2 and it works amazing. I think it's one of the best drugstore brow products on the market. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and comb through my brows. I naturally like natural bushy brow. I know that's not everybody's taste. I'm really not into like the traditional like Instagram or like YouTuber pretty precise eyebrow. I'm really not into that. I like it to look really natural and so I keep my eyebrows really thick, which some people don't like, but you know, to each their own. So what I like to do is I like to come down here and I like to just kind of make a line right underneath, just like this, just so we get the initial shape of the brow. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it to the top. And it takes mad concentration. And then when I come to the front of the brow, I just kind of do some strokes upwards, just like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the spoolie side and I'm really gonna blend that through. I feel like that looks pretty darn good. I really, really need to go and get my eyebrows maintained a little better. <laughs> They're getting a little wild and crazy, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna kind of brush the tail a little bit and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite brow. Awesome. 
I like a real boxy front to my brows, and so that's why I'm just going in and kind of evening that out. But I do, I feel like that's, that's good. All right, now for my favorite part. I am going to go ahead and be using the Physician's Formula by Casey Holmes. This is the palette we are going to be using today. This is actually a really, I think, an outstanding palette for the price. Typically, your Physician's Formula is gonna be one of the higher end brands at the drugstore. And so when I saw this come out, I thought, oh, it's gonna be a lot of money. It's probably gonna be like 25, 30 bucks, something like that. And they actually came out at $19.99, which I think is a fabulous price for what you get in here. So you get a bronzer, a blush, a highlight, a lippy stick, it's called the Butter Lip Cream, and then you get the butter fragrance that is in all of these products, and it smells amazing. Like you're at a tropical beach and you, like you just wanna be sitting by the waves. Like I love it. They gave you four eyeshadows, and one of them is a shimmer, and I believe the other three are kind of a matte or satin fill. So I think you get a lot of product in here for the price, especially knowing that Physicians Formula usually runs anywhere. Like, I think the butter bronzers are like, you know, $9.99 or $10.99, something like that. And then the butter blushes usually run about $8.99, and the butter highlights are usually like $13 dollars or so. So to get all of that in there, plus a lipstick, plus a fragrance, plus four eyeshadows, I think it's an awesome palette for the price point, especially for the amount of product. They're not quite as big as the single pan ones are, but I find that it takes me a long time to hit pan on those products. So I feel like this will last you a long time. I did bring something else in for the highlight just because I don't know what it is about the Physicians Formula highlights. I really don't like them. They have this weird creamy consistency, but also at the same time they are chunky with glitter like crazy. And I am more of like a natural like I want to glow from within kind of thing and that just I mean, if you love a glitter highlight, by all means, you're probably gonna love this highlight because it is a beautiful shade. I think it's a beautiful color. It's called Just Beachy, which I think is so cute. Anyways, and they're all like beach themed things, obviously. But one thing that I wanna point out with this palette is that it's, most people are kind of um, a lot darker complected than I am. I am a very fair person. And I've heard a lot of reviews that fair people can't get this to work for them or they don't like them. I think that is fair to some extent. I can make it work with my skin tone, but I feel like if you were any lighter than me, this palette is not for you. This is too dark as far as the face products go. I feel like you could probably use the eyeshadows and if you want it for the lippy and the fragrance, you know, you're still getting a bomb deal there because I don't think they sell that fragrance anywhere else but in these fun little palettes that they do. I have to use a very light hand when I'm using these products that are in here, but let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the Butter Bronzer, and it's in the shade Deep Bronzer. So this is their deepest shade. I believe they have three shades. They have Light Bronzer, Bronzer, and then Deep Bronzer. That's one thing Physicians Formula is known for. They don't really have a lot of shade range with their products, but it kind of works. I find, this one can be a little dark if I apply it too much. So I'm just gonna lightly, lightly, in circular motions, just kind of carve the hollow of my cheek out. And I find if I work it in, and I like to put it on the top of my forehead as well, just because that's where the sun naturally would hit you. And I find that that just makes it look a little more even around your face. And I was using the Real Techniques. I, it came in the 
face kit. It's kind of dense, but also very mobile, if you will. And it's tapered down the sides. I don't know if you can kind of see that, but there's shorter bristles on the sides that can pick up product and kind of move product around. Whereas something like this, it doesn't have as tapered sides, if you will. It has a little bit, but not much. But these kind of brushes are great for bronzer, for blushes. It's even good for highlight if you're into that. So next I'm gonna go in, this is my a Wet n Wild brush. I got this at Dollar Tree. <laughs> they are the softest brushes I have ever felt in my life. They are so soft, they work so well. They naturally have this pinky tone to them that's not product on there, they're white and pink. But I'm gonna go ahead and dip into the, the butter blush here. And this is in the shade Copper Cabana and it packs a punch as far as pigment goes. It, I just like to briefly, briefly stipple it. And I am not going to put any past right here. And I find that when I do, it kind of closes in my face and I wanna have kind of like that, not a broad face, but <laughs> you know, just, I want it to focus more on the apple of my cheek, on the side here. I just find it gives you a more flattering look by doing that. And these blushes are really, really beautiful. They've got a natural sheen to them. I'll do it on this side so you can kind of see it a little bit better. I am just lightly, lightly stippling my brush into the product just because once again, it is a dark blush and those tend to pack a lot of pigment. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna take the Too Reflect Shimmer Palette. This is in the shade Boozy Brunch. This is the replacement of my highlight and I know people are thinking, what the heck? That has like brown and pink and tan all mixed together. How is that gonna be a highlight? I promise you, these shimmer strips, they pack a punch and they're very, very natural but I find it is the most beautiful like glow from within glow that you can possibly muster. So I'm just gonna hit that. I actually prefer my highlight to hit down kind of on my cheek as well, kind of in the same place that I do my blush, just because I find that that looks the most flattering. I'm just gonna go over all of that with that same brush that we used with our setting powder. And now, for the fun part, we're gonna go in and do the eyes. So, I'm gonna make it work with the four that she has in here. I think you can get a really beautiful look using the four shades that she has. Like I said, these are very pigmented and they're soft shadows. Like, they're, I, I actually find that they blend really, really well. And I find that they look really, really good with my blue eyes because they have a lot of copper undertones. And when you have blue eyes, one of the best things that you can use as a contrast to make your eyes pop, either oranges, coppers, browns, especially, I find that shades just like this that are kind of like this terracotta, reddish orange. I find that these are beautiful and they really make blue eyes pop. So this one, I'm just gonna kind of pack it into the crease in windshield wiper motions. I'm also using, this is just a um, wet and wild eyeshadow crease brush. And like I said, we're just gonna work it into the crease, just like that. I don't know if you can still see that highlight, but oh, she's natural but cute. Okay, so I'm gonna hop into the next color, which is also it's like a more red color, but I'm also gonna mix it with the green just on the outer corner just to kind of darken that outer corner and really give us depth here. And this time I'm still using kind of that windshield wiper motion, but I'm also kind of doing small circular motions. And I find that just blends the product out a lot easier. I find that it gets it to where it needs to be without getting it everywhere. And do the same thing on the other eye, blowing off the excess. And 
and once again I think this is natural enough that you could wear it out if you wanted like I don't think it's too crazy of colors or anything like that but I'm then gonna go in with a flat definer brush and this is where I'm gonna pick up that highlight and I am gonna put that all over the center of my lid so what you see on my lid is I have actually taken that highlight shade and put it all over the top center part of my lid all around I find that that is one of the best ways to actually apply that particular product it works great as an eyeshadow like I said I don't really like it on my skin I feel like it looks chunky but as an eyeshadow it's very beautiful the next step I'm gonna use is eyeliner I use the elf active eyeliner it comes with this little green mark on it and that's how you can kind of tell that it's a little bit different than the regular elf stuff the only problem I find with this is that I do, it's a coal pencil, but I have to sharpen it myself and it is very, very soft. So it breaks pretty easily, but I just take the wet and wild pencil sharpener, sharpen it up. And then I'm going to just apply that to the waterline on my lower lashes or lash line, I should say. And I find that this actually stays in my lash line pretty dang good. It stays all day. It doesn't smudge, doesn't do anything weird or anything, doesn't run because it is that active formula, meaning that they made it so it is very, very waterproof. So it's great for like if you're going swimming, if you're going, going out, um, I think this is a great eyeliner to use, especially if you're going to be, you know, sweating or in the, in the, eh in the snow like there is today. I don't typically line the top of my lids. I find that it closes my eyes off and I like them to be more open. Next, I'm gonna take the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. This is the little travel size, so it's really cute and tiny. This is one of the best drugstore mascaras out on the market, I find. I really, really like the Lash Paradise by L'Oreal. I also love, love, love this one, all the different formulas of it. Um, the only one that I wasn't really a big fan of was like the Butterfly version of this one, which I'm not even sure if that was even part of the Lash Blast line, but it wasn't my favorite. Anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on putting that on my eyes. And I just do this in a blinking motion, just like that. I find that um, that really gets it lash, like root to tip. So if you're looking for the most volume you can get, which that's what I like in a mascara. I really like when they are volumizing. I don't really care so much about the length just because I naturally have really long eyelashes. And so I don't find that it's hard for me to get length out of a mascara. So I do like them to be more volumized because my eyelashes are not very thick, but they are pretty long. And once again, I find that blinking onto it is one of the best ways. I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to the bottom lashes. And when I apply to the bottom lashes, I barely, barely touch them. I just barely run them through. I just find for my eyes, my eyes are already big enough as it is, so I really don't need help with, you know, making them look even bigger. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and coat the top once again with another coat just to really emphasize the volume. Just like that. Perfect. So, to finish, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on this lip cream, lip butter. Um, it's in the shade Pop the Bubbly, which I think is really cute. It is kind of a pinky, peachy vibe. I'm just gonna pop that on my lids. Uh, fun fact, because I'm so fair, I find that the color of my skin, it really doesn't look well with like peaches on the lips. So I'm gonna actually go over with something a little bit darker that's a little bit more pink. It's one of these lipsticks, what does it say? Yeah, it's the Color Riche Shine lipstick in the shade 908 Sparkling Rose. 
These are by far and away the shiniest lipsticks you will ever, ever, ever wear. But they are so comfortable. They're so beautiful on the lips. I absolutely love them. So I'm just going to make sure that we're all blended here. I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and pop just a smidge more of the blush on. Just on the very tops of my cheeks. Just to kind of give us that accentuation. Um, now at this time you can add a setting spray. I currently do not have one with me so I can't really use one. I do want to point out I was able to just go ahead and finish the other eye. Um, and basically all you do is you just pat that highlight all over the main part of your lid just like that. And then I went in with the buffing brush um, and I added a little bit more of the red on the outsides just to kind of give it some contrast and really make it flow really nicely together. Now one way you could end it too is take that lightish, lightish shade and just put it under the brow bone. I find when you do that, that really ties your looks all together in my opinion. So this is the finished look. I hope you guys like it. I find that it's very wearable, very natural, very everyday, but also a little bit smoky, a little bit sultry, just enough that you can kind of pull it as an all-nighter as well. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe down below and also check out all my other social media platforms. They'll be listed in the four corners. But yeah, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.